In 1980, Congress appointed a nine-person commission to investigate what had happened and why. Over the next two years, more than 750 people gave testimony. Many of the former camp prisoners spoke in public for the first time. They came to say goodbye to me before being moved to Machi, Colorado, and I waved goodbye to my sister from the window. I did not know then that it would be four and a half years before I would see any of them again. Our family was placed in a horse stall. Which were very unsanitary and the stench was unbearable. Where one horse was housed, though we were three families. On August 27, 1941, at 2 a.m., we were informed that our baby had passed away. <laughs> As in regards to my brother James who was killed in Manzanar, I have never been able to talk about this. More people come up to me and say, I must speak up. In a short time, my father and two uncles were arrested and put in concentration camps. I am very bitter about this. I have not seen my father since I was 11 years old. I am now 51 years old. I have missed my father very much, and I wonder. I, I wonder if he's alive today. The uh, commissioners took two years to study it and came to the conclusion that there was a gross violation of constitutional rights. And the commission decided, and so therefore we recommend that the Congress issue an apology to the Japanese American community and pay $20,000 redress payments to uh, the internees. Year after year, Mineta pushed for redress. Year after year, the idea died in committee. The bill finally reached Congress in 1985. We know that 120,000 people, most of them native-born American citizens, were denied their basic civil and constitutional rights. It was called H.R. 442, in honor of the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, the famous all-Japanese-American unit in World War II. Returning from three years of war service in Italy and France, the 442nd Combat Team receives a rousing welcome at New York. The veteran unit is made up of Japanese Americans, many from Hawaii. The biggest thing we had going for us was the valor and the dedication of the men and women in the armed services during World War II, who, despite what happened to them, were proving their patriotism. With Republicans holding the Senate majority, Mineta would need to gather support from both sides of the aisle. On the Republican side was someone Norm Mineta had met at Heart Mountain Concentration Camp when he was 11 years old. And so we had our own Boy Scout jamboree here in the camp. And our scout leaders would write to the scouts in Ralston, Deaver, Cody, all the towns surrounding uh, Heart Mountain. Invariably, they would all write back, oh, we're, we're not going in there. Well, first you can imagine that uh, in Cody, Wyoming, there was a uh, extraordinary fear about this place. This was 11,000 people sitting in a sagebrush flat between Powell and Cody, Wyoming with the guard towers and barbed wire and the guns aimed inward. And we thought, what if those people escape? So finally, uh, a troop from Cody, Wyoming came in. And we did our knot tying contests and woodworking contests. And, and then we got paired off with a kid from the Cody camp to put up our, uh, our tent. And that was Alan Simpson. And we messed around, and we were both rather pesky. 
All I do remember is he has the same, I'm not even looking at him right now, he has the same look in his eyes that he did then, which is deviltry, peskiness. All through junior high school, high school and college, we wrote to each other. 74, I get elected to the House. 78, he gets elected to the Senate. And our friendship went back as if we were still sitting in that pup tent. It's been one wonderful, rich ride of true friendship, which is a beautiful thing. And there are a lot of those issues where I've had an opposite view. I'm a liberal Democrat. He's a conservative. He's a good Republican. So it's not that we had agreement on everything. But Norm Mineta and Alan Simpson both remembered what America had been like in 1943. We'd go downtown, and here would be a sign on the restaurant, no Japs allowed, you sons of bitches killed my son at Iwo Jima. Now, how do you feel when you're a kid and you've been out to the Boy Scouts? and seeing guys just like yourself. He was an American citizen, and they stuck him behind barbed wire. That's a hell of a thing to do to people. Senator Inouye, of course, Senator Matsunaga, were great champions of this bill as H.R. 442 making its way through the House and Senate. But right by them, Spark and uh, Dan, was Alan Simpson all the way. H.R. 442 came to a vote in the House on September 17, 1987. Norm Mineta himself chose the date, the 200th anniversary of the U.S. Constitution. And though this bill is a deeply personal issue for a small number, this legislation touches all of us because it touches the very core of our nation. Does our Constitution indeed protect all of us, regardless of race or culture? When I heard Norm speak, it brought it all together, that this is what we were fighting for, that yes, it was about constitutional issues, yes, it was about America's promise, but more than anything, it was about individuals. It was about family. The House bill passed, and nearly a year later, on August 10th, President Ronald Reagan signed the Civil Liberties Act of 1988. Justice had been delayed more than 45 years. How many countries really admit a wrong they've done and then admit it and then correct it? 